Well, welcome to Carp Files, guys, but more importantly, welcome back to the fishery tours. Finally, COVID restrictions have been moved and we're allowed to travel freely up and down the UK again, visiting some awesome day ticket fisheries. So, first one of the year, where are we? We are at the awesome and very impressive Near Gatton fishery, tucked away in the Rowland Hills of Shropshire. This is an absolutely peachy, picturesque looking venue, but more importantly, it's what actually lives in here as well. Just behind me in this lovely, lovely lake, you've got carp that go up to mid 40 in here you've got a big number of 30 pounders after that and once again after that you've got a big number of high 20s as well it does boast some serious stock for this venue and it's one I'm really looking forward to getting my teeth into over the next few days or so. On this trip I've got one of my good mates as well, Luke Edwards, he's nested up in the swim down from me so we'll be keeping tabs on Luke's session as well and hopefully between the pair of us we can winkle out one or two fish for the cameras themselves. So just like all the other fishery tours as well, tomorrow morning I'm going to be reeling in my rods, running around the whole venue, showing you all the swims, all the facilities and what you can expect here on your visit to near Gatton Fishery. I'm really, really looking forward to this one as well. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to head to the bivvy. I'm gasping for a cup of tea, so we'll get the kettle on. We'll have a catch up there and I'll talk all things rigs and what bait I'm using and all things carpy uh, and put the wheels to right and uh, show you exactly how I'm targeting this venue. The sun is just about to start breaking through this dull cloud and we're set for some absolutely beautiful weather over the next couple of days or so. So, right, let's get to the bivvy and get the kettle on. Oh, do you know what? The first brew, the first brew is always the one, isn't it? Once your rods are sorted and your spots are done and that first cuppa, oh, it's just a settler, isn't it? You know, absolutely. So here we are, guys. Swim number four on the awesome Nia Gatton. I have got lots and lots of options in this swim. To be fair, I have sort of um, got in contact with a few mates who fish it regularly. I've got, um, you know, I know one of the old bailiffs as well, so I've got in contact with him. He has given me a bit of information and, you know, that is one of the big things I could say. Any sort of venue you're heading to, if you've got anyone who has a bit more clued up on it, you know, give them a ring and ask for that information. You know, um, it can only help you in your session, you know, that's coming ahead. So, so yeah, straight in front of me, there's a lovely island that island is shared between swim three and swim four obviously luke who's down from us he's fishing the left hand side and i'm fishing the right hand side so i'll just bring up the drone footage now so there's the island itself now i'm fishing my left hand rod just on that area there where you can see that x i'm in about four and a half maybe five foot of water there really nice clean area casting the lead out felt it down it's a proper crack down so it's a nice polished area so it is middle of spring the fish here are slowly waking up they're not moting around the lake at the moment but they have started to wake up and they have been coming out to a little bit of bait they're not stoving lots in but the bait that's been going in those are the guys who've been picking up the bite so i've gone out with my normal mix that i always use I made a load of it before I turned up here today. So that there is the awesome fibre boilies. That's a new boilie that's due for release from Mainline later this year. That's been in test. Believe it or not, that bait has been in test for I think now for nearly three or four years. You know, it's unbelievable. With fingers with Mainline, they will test baits not just for one winter. They'll do it for three or four winters, three or four summers. Do you know what I mean? To make sure that bait is constantly working right through. So yeah, the awesome fibre is hopefully, fingers crossed, due for release later this year uh, so what I've done I've whizzed up a load of that added our chipped hemp and uh chipped hemp chipped maize and hemp into that mix as well load of sweet corn into that mix and then I've just capped it off as I always do with the awesome smart cell liquid so give that a good whizzed up that is the mix I take it everywhere it always serves me well and that's what I've deposited out on that island spot in on that x area um, so I haven't gone mad I've probably put three or four spoms out of that on that area the rig itself lovely little uh, German combi rig there fishing on a snowman tipped with a little bit of yellow to sort of mimic the chipped maize and the sweet corn that's in that mix so that's fishing that's the left hand rod the middle rod I've come into a little deeper water I've sort of come over a little bit uh, again looking at that drone footage the X there is where I'm fishing the middle rod I'm in about 10 foot of water there not as hard 
an area it's quite it's a more of a softer area there but you know you're still getting a good sort of feel down fishing that on a pop-up i've put a couple of spoms out on that and then i've just literally peppered a load of the fiber uh, fiber boilie around the area itself right hand rod again over to the right hand side of the swim then there's a, a lovely margin over that side there there's a load of reeds coming through in the middle i walked around before again with some of that mix sort of handballed it through the opening into the area I'm, I'm in about five foot maybe six foot of water there again it's quite a nice area nice and clean to present a rig on i'm fishing that same rig on the old combi german rig and that's how we're playing out those are your free rods all nice and out all fishing well and uh, just got to sit on my hands now and hopefully one of those free will ring out to us so yeah that's the evening ahead i will keep you posted if out happens I'm going to finish drinking this lovely first brew. There is definitely going to be a lot more. Um, and then I'm going to nip round, have a word with Luke, see how he's getting on. And if anything occurs, guys, we shall uh, let you know. If not, we shall see you in the morning. guys um, it's just gone half past four I think and the middle rods just come into play literally I just went down to see Luke just to have a cold beer and uh, yeah the middle rod that we put a little bit of spam out this is the one we're fishing on a pop-up just in that sort of 10 foot depth and it's come good so hopefully we can uh, navigate this one in for you but uh, he seems quite angry at the moment so the fish has just kited sort of left down the pond but to be fair all the sort of branches that are over the water they've all been trimmed away underneath so if the fish does kite down you can dip your tips uh, and sort of play the fish back out into open water but I must admit He's just holding ground at the moment, this one. It'll be nice to get the first one in, that's for sure. So fingers crossed, we can get this one in for you. an X-Men. <laughs> Wicked. That's a lovely, lovely looking fish guys. Mint. Absolutely mint. Well there you go guys, that is the result of that take on the middle rod. He's in the net, sulking at the moment, so we're going to get the mat, the sling and all the rest of it. But yeah, absolutely buzzing to get off the mark so quickly here at Gatton. So uh, yeah, looks a lovely fish, so let's go and have a look at him. guys what an absolute amazing start here at Gatton I've got a very very angry 34 pounder here that is not happy at all in fact he really wants to beat me up this one but have a look at that that is an absolute wicked wicked mirror what an amazing start to our trip here coming over the bait that we put in as well that mix and that new fiber boilie and I am absolutely over the moon to get one from the off first well before the first night um, absolutely chuffed a bit really really am what a wicked wicked mirror so I haven't got the uh, rod back on its spot I bloody will do uh, so I will show you the other side of this awesome creature and then uh, we'll get the spot topped up again get that bait back out there and then hopefully we might be able to catch one of his mates as well but yeah what a start <laughs> there's the other side Amazing, what an absolutely chunky, chunky mirror. 
happy spring <laughs> and uh, yeah great way to get the first fishery tour up and running for 2021 what a result Mwah. yes Right, new rig, new pop-up and whatnot, so I'm just testing it in the edge to make sure it's all sitting or balancing right. So that's all good. So get the high-vis pines back on the spot for the night ahead. Standing here, I'm just uh, my horizon marker is a big oak tree in the back field, but let's get this back out there. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. Good morning guys, it is set to be another beautiful day here in the Shire. The sun is out and uh, yeah, it's just a lovely, lovely morning to be on the bank drinking the first brew of the day. Nothing to report rod-wise. Um, I had a couple of liners on all rods last night to be fair, um, especially on the island rod, but that's another another story. Load of bee pitch sort of oh, about 1am. I got up in the end because it was just almost like, you know, bream bites. I was, oh. Got up in the end, put the torch on, couple of ducks in the coop giving it large on the spot so yeah kept getting picked up by then so I had to bring literally the bait had been peppered to death they picked it up quite a few times uh, so that had to go back out that's early hours of the morning uh, after that nothing I've had uh, nothing to report all very quiet I haven't heard anything either but my god I tell you what it proper dropped cold last night ridiculously cold still uh, that's spring fishing you know really warm days and um, very very cold nights the sheep are actually going mental at the moment on the field over there <laughs> the, the sort of dawn chorus from the sheep over here um, but so uh, yeah of course this is fishery tour day so we're going to be reeling in the rods in a couple of hours time and then showcasing this venue and showing you what you can expect when you get here to near Gatton so I'm going to finish me brew definitely putting the pan on that's the rule number one of any any session and bacon is involved at some point so uh, yeah the old bacon will be sizzling away very shortly and then we'll reel those rods in and showcase this venue for you well guys just bringing in the last of the rods it's just gone 11 a.m. and as promised we shall get cracking on that fishery tour so uh, yeah I'll bring this rig in now we'll head down to swim number one and I think that's probably the best place to start Let's go. So guys, here we are, swim number one at Gatton Fishery. Now this is the first swim that you'll come across during your visit here. Now just to my right hand side, that is where the shower and toilet block is located. Lovely clean toilets there, nice shower cubicle. And then you've got a hand basin as well if you fancy a wash up or a shave and whatnot during your stay. Fantastic facilities provided there. And then each in each swim itself, you'll also notice to my left hand side, you get an unhooking mat, a waist sling, a fresh water bucket, and the landing net. 
Now those are all provided by the fishery for you and they're located in each swim around the fishery themselves. Please, please make sure you use those. Do not bring your own equipment. You have to use the ones that are provided for you. So swim number one. What a lovely, lovely piece of water we've got here. You've got a nice island to your left hand side there. Nice close quarters fishing. Your little clumps of pads dotted here as well. You've got a far margin. There's lots and lots of options in this swim. Behind the island itself, again, you've got lots of clumps of pads, a few reeds, and there's a little tiny stalking area there. So it's a sort of area you could sort of nip around in the daytime, put a bit of bait, keep an eye on that area. If you start seeing a few bubbles show, you can nip round with a single rod, cast it onto that spot, and hopefully snare one. Now, in terms of fishing from the swim, you've got options. Obviously, you've got the island, you've got the bay down to the left-hand side, but you've also got that far margin. And again, it's a great area to target. It's a sort of area you can walk around. There's some little clumps of pads as well over there. There's some lovely bulrushes, and that's the area you can nip round. Again, put the bay in by hand and then come back to the swim and cast over there so you've got precision baiting there's a lovely big tree as well which sort of overhangs the water that would be a great spot so there's lots and lots of options in this swim I'm told the fish do get down here in numbers it'd be a great swim to target I would myself be quite happy plonking myself here for a few days swim number one has definitely got the thumbs up love the look of this swim So here we are guys, swim number two here at Near Gatton, and once again, another beautiful swim. As you can see opposite me, you've got the old swim that used to be. Of course, you guys are booking this place out, so if you wanted to, you could sort of fish over that side. Personally, I'll be bivvied up here and fishing over to the old swim. It's the same as swim number one, you can sort of nip round the other side, and again, you've got that far margin, those overhanging bushes, it's just sort of screaming out for a load of bait. So you can sort of walk into the old swim, fire the baiting spoon, spray a load of bait up and down that margin, come back and then cast over to it. Depths here, you've probably got sort of sixes and sevens in front of you in the middle, and then that rises up to that far margin into the shallower water. But 100% during your stay, you're gonna have fish passing up and down through this area of water. So that is swim number two, an absolutely fantastic one again. And what we're gonna do now is head over to swim number three. That's where Luke is bivvied up for this session. So we'll go and pick his brains, see what he's found and see how he's approaching his session here at Gatton. So here we are guys and swim number three at Near Gatton. Once again, a beautiful, beautiful swim. Luke is fishing this one during this session. So we're gonna pick his brain, see what he's found during his stay for the first sort of night. Uh, now he's approaching the second night going into it. So uh, what's in front of you, mate? Well, we've got the island and on the um, left of the island is a drop off. I'm fishing about four foot. I fished about six foot last night, but I had, no I had nothing. Yep. Terry's come round. Give me some advice a little bit closer, so okay. took his advice from that one. Radio, and what your baiting approach, putting a bit out or? Yeah, I love spotters, you know. So I, last night I went in, in pretty heavy with about 15 spawns, but tonight I'm just going to come away from that and fish to the right of it, which is probably about two foot, and just hopefully they'll pick up and get a bit confident in last night's bait. Yeah, man. Okay, so that's your right hand rod. Your middle rod, are you going a bit further? I am tonight. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. go off on again on the. Uh, these venues I don't think you can beat the bailiff's advice so yeah. I'm gonna go right tight against the far margin and go an handful and and spoon a few baits out. Oh, so you sort of nip round. Yeah, nip as, round, yeah. So as we so, sort of swims one and two, that far side you can actually walk round there and as we said about this precision baiting. So I think what Luke's gonna do is same as the spod mix we showed you on the footage there, uh, what Luke is using, he'll be nipping round there later, putting the spod in and then casting over to that sort of uh, snaggy margin where the overhanging bushes are on his middle rod. So um, yeah, left hand rod further down or further down yeah we see when we got here yesterday we seen um look like a nice mid 30 pound fish jump out of the water so i've just peppered the air with a bit of, bit of throwing stick and a yeah. bit of spot down there and yeah 
I say, I think they are following this wind a little bit, aren't they? Yeah, During the daytime. I think so, yeah. I think so. Like I say, when we looked at peg one and two, they were, you know, there was a big part of them that should be in there because of this wind pushing down there and those pads. I think during the daytime, the fish are sort of making their way down there. And then during the nighttime, they're making their way back up the lake into the deeper area. It's funny how we've seen one down there. We've seen one, we've seen another one roll down there. Mm. Then about an hour later, you had to take it. Was, yeah. You know, you can't, you can't write fishing sometimes. No, that's it. I think what we've found with this venue, there seems to be fish dotted about everywhere. Yeah. Uh, all parts of the lake are being visited by the stock. So, um, yeah, that's how we're planning out for, well, Luke is planning out on swim three. Obviously, next we're in swim four, which is where I am. We'll skip that one because I've showed you that. So we'll head round now to swim five and show you what that swim's all about. So guys, here we are in swim number five. This is the last swim on this bank here at Neogatton. Once again, it boasts some awesome, awesome features to go out. In fact, they're that awesome. I've actually pinched a few from fishing in swim number four. Because no one's in here, I have cast a little bit further to my right to take advantage of what this swim has to offer. So to your right hand side, you've got a lovely, lovely bay, all reed lined. You've got overhanging bushes. There's a few pads that are just starting to pop as well. So there's no doubt fish are going to be spending a lot of the time here especially when there's weather like this that is one area I'll be targeting also on that bank it's all accessible as well so again like all the other swims you can walk around and bait up by hand and that I think is one of the key elements of this fishery is that anywhere you want to fish you can actually get to it and put it in by hand and then cast over to it which is fantastic so another feature i have been told as well by this by a few of the bailiffs and the fishery owner Right in the corner there you've got the outlet which is opposite that telegraph pole, right dead in the corner. There's some lovely little reeds, bulrushes and that big overhanging bush. That is an area quite a number of fish do come out from. It's an area that's known to sort of house some of the bigger fish if you like, some of the big residents have been known to get caught off that spot. Coming down that sort of far margin, also you've got those reeds, which is one of the areas we're targeting from swim four. Hopefully that will come into fruition later this session. And then further on down the far margin, you've got that lovely big tree overhanging bushes. Again, it's accessible by walking around and baiting up and then casting over. This is the deeper part of the pool. You've got sort of 12s, 13s over here. I think there's a 14 foot in one area, uh, but this predominantly is the deeper area, but you have got those marginal shelves. So so when you've got weather like today you know you can take advantage of that plus that outlet as well it does shallow up up to that outlet so uh, that is an area I'll be targeting in swim number five surely you agree it's an absolute another winner very happy here if I was to plonk myself here for a few days so as I was mentioning before you've got that really big tree right in front of the swim now behind that you've probably seen during the other footage there is a beautiful beautiful luxury log cabin which no doubt that will be coming into play very soon and be able to book that out here at Neogatton for a longer stay. If you fancy uh, a stay with your loved one or your kids or whatever, that is going to become available. It is 99% done at the moment, but Terry, the owner, has uh, allowed us to go in now and have a quick look at what that luxury log, log cabin has to offer. So let's grab the camera, head around there and have a look at the five star Hilton. So guys, how about that for a bit of luxury? We are in the beautiful five-star luxury log cabin on site here at Neogatton. I feel a bit out of place sitting here in my joggers and my spot stained t-shirt. And uh, Terry, I do apologize, mate. I will clean up after I leave, honestly. But um, yeah, what an amazing, awesome cabin this is. You've got two bedrooms in the back there, 
all kitted out to a very high spec. You've got a very uh, plush looking bathroom as well. And then just behind me, we've got the breakfast bar and then a completely kitted out modern kitchen as well. So you've got your, your oven, your, your gas hob or your electric hob. You've got the fridge there. There is toasters and kettles and microwaves, everything you would need. It really is the home from home. In front of me, I've got a massive plasma TV as well. We've got Wi-Fi. More importantly, just through those doors, you can fish for 40 pounders out of this awesome cabin. So if you're looking for a little breakaway with your loved one or, you know, one of your kids or whatever, you know, this would be an absolutely beautiful place, lovely part of the country to come. You are in the middle of the Shropshire countryside, away from everything, and um, yeah, unbelievable. So in terms of the fishing from this swim, Obviously you've got the beautiful patio there, you've got to the back of the island which is sort of four to five foot depth just there, you've got the long channel as well and then you've got the old stone swim just to the right hand side and again just like all the other swims it's an area you can sort of run rain, bait up by hand and then cast to and also you've got some margins just to your right hand side here but the fish do get in this bay you know you've got quite a big piece of water to go out from the cabin you know I have seen fish here during our stay we've seen the odd roll and stuff so we know they do get down here and uh, yeah what an awesome place to be fishing and or fishing for them from should I say uh, but yeah I'm really really happy I am contemplating putting the telly on and uh, watching a bit of the footy but um, yeah the angler in me is keen to get back to the swim we've got another night left and hopefully between now and when we leave tomorrow morning we can just winkle out one more fish. My rods have been in all day since I've been running around doing all the filming. Uh, Luke, I've just seen his, he just put his rods back out for the night. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do guys. The awesome luxury log cabin. If you're interested in this, message the Fishery Facebook page. Keep an eye on the website as the details start to come through of when this place will be available to hire. Right, let's go and get their rods out and see if we can catch another chunk from the Agaton. Well guys, here we are. This is the last rod of the evening to go out. And uh, I've already pre-baited this one as well. When I was doing, when I was over doing the cabin tour, um, I sort of took that opportunity to bait up on the point. So where we were fishing those reeds last night, I've moved it just this way down that margin. And I'm just about to cast over there now. Uh, this area, I've just come off it a little bit. So I'm into deeper water. I'm into probably about six foot of water this one and I've just topped it up when I was around there with some fibre boilies so hopefully we can get this crosswinds picking up a little bit now but so that went down really nicely we are happy with that so we'll uh, just let that line sink before we put the bobbin on um, and that's it, over to the carp gods now. Hopefully, before we leave tomorrow morning, one of these awesome fish will pay us a visit to the bank again. Spots are out, the rigs are right. It's over to the carp gods now, isn't it? There is a barbecue that is crying out to be lit, and um, I fancy a nice cold beer and a bit of meat. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll leave the rods do their thing, and we'll get that barbecue lit. Hopefully, we will speak to you during the night. Well guys, we have been rudely interrupted <laughs> while eating our barbecue. My right hand rod has just gone. I did have a little bit of a funny take about half hour ago. Reeled the rod in and uh, something's had a go at it because the, 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 the point of the hook had gone. 
So I've literally cast it back out sort of 15 minutes later, 20 minutes later, and it's gone. And we're now attached to another Gatton fish. So hopefully we can uh, play this one in, in the evening sunshine and show you another one. So here we are guys, the evening bite and we've got ourselves a lovely, lovely little common. It's just gone over 17, 17 2 this one, but we are more than happy, way <laughs> sunshine, <laughs> we are more than happy with that little cracker, he's awesome, I'm loving him, he's a very nice, very distinctive common going forward when this starts to get to be one of the big players. You'll notice him, that's for sure. With that little bit of uh, scales sort of moved about on that area there, but that's an awesome little fella, isn't it? Hey, we're happy with him, without a doubt. Obviously he came in on that um, right hand rod over to the cabin where I moved it earlier today, coming further down or back towards me on that far margin. But yeah, we're chuffed as nuts with that one. What a result, right. I'm gonna get him back. I haven't put the rod back out there. I should have done, schoolboy error. But um, he's uh, he's men. I'm well happy with him. <laughs> uh, right, stop waffling, Watson, and get the rod back out, and we'll get this one back in his lovely, lovely little lake. Well, good morning guys, and stark difference what it was the last couple of mornings. Thermal jackets back on, and there's a proper chill in the air this morning. It is not that warm, let me tell you. You know, the last couple of mornings we've had beautiful spring sunshine, and today there's a proper chill in the air again. Uh, but nothing to report on rod-wise, very quiet night for me. Uh, no liners and nothing. I really thought they'd be up for a bit of grub last night. I'd you know, I'm so high on confidence thinking that we're going to get another fish after we had that lovely common. Um, like I say, I had the first take from over that new spot that we put out. Obviously, the hook came back in and it was dinked, hence why I lost the first fish. Buzzed it back out there, like 20 minutes, half an hour away. That's when we had the that common. And I thought, they're up for a bit of feed, you know. We've had two takes off that area within a sort of a couple of hours, I suppose, of, with putting the rod out. And... Um, yeah, nothing materialised, so yeah, left, sort of woke up this morning scratching my head, unfortunately. Um, Luke, unfortunately, last night as well, sort of after we had the common, into late evening, he lost one just off that island spot, so he's absolutely gutted, you know, sort of left him left him alone for an hour with his head in his hands as he comes to terms with it. It's, it's fishing, it, it happens, it'll always happen, won't it? But uh, it's never nice losing one. Uh, but other than that, all quiet. I haven't spoke to him this morning. I don't know if he had any more occurrences or if he had an early bite or anything like that. So uh, I'll go over and have a catch up with him in a bit. Uh, other than that, yeah, we've got about two hours left now before the next group of anglers arrive. So I'm gonna finish drinking my coffee and then start the dreaded pack down. Not the one, hate packing down. Absolutely hate packing down. Well guys, that's it from us here at Near Gatton. I hope you enjoyed the fishery tour and uh, what we've been up to for the last couple of days. I'm over the moon with that 34 pounder and of course that lovely little 17 as well. Really, really stoked to get those couple of fish. And uh, yeah, that sort of brings it to an end. So if you're after any more information regarding Near Gatton fishery, 
give them a follow on Facebook, just search Neogat and Carp Fishery, all the information will come up there with contact details and all the rest of it, and then keep an eye out for the website, a new one which is due to go live very, very soon. From me and Luke, all the best, and we'll see you on the next fishery tour.